the virus of racism, Georgia's third president, Mikhail Saakashvili, has been accused of xenophobia again. In his Facebook video address last week, he demanded from the Georgian government to prevent any Chinese citizen from setting a foot on a Georgian soil. Saakashvili referred to the possible spread of coronavirus but generalized it to all Chinese citizens irrespective of their place of residence. Several human rights defenders warned that the coronavirus scare sparked an anti-Asian sentiment among the public. Some of those with the Asian background staying in Georgia confirmed the fears over racism. When I cross the street, people call me corona or virus Chinese. And I'm not Chinese. And I'm not a virus. I'm so hurt. Yan Yung, a Korean living in Georgia, complained on Facebook. Thousands of Georgian live abroad. Would it be acceptable if they were targeted like that? One Georgian user on Facebook asked. Some Georgians living in China compiled a video with the supporting messages to the Chinese people amidst the crisis. Tragedy sparks debate on poverty. On Monday, Georgian public was rocked by the death of a pregnant mother. Four minors and an elderly woman as a result of fire erupted in western Emirati region. The fire reportedly broke out of a fireplace in a house where socially vulnerable people stayed in a place with no gas and electricity. Conditions of the family, the reports about their access to the social benefits, triggered debates on extreme poverty in Georgia, something that the ruling Georgian dream dismissed as inappropriate. Journalist Bondom Dinarash agreed. It is clear that the social status of that poor family is used for political speculations. Even a socially secure family is not safe from falling victim to a tragedy like this, Dinarashvili insisted. For users of Facebook, Georgian Dream MP Reva Zarveladze became an instant anti-hero after he suggested that children do not starve in Georgia and that if someone does, there wouldn't be the fault of political opposition that used to be in power. The UNICEF estimated in 2018 that almost 7% of children in Georgia, or 53,000, lived below the extreme poverty line, up to $1.25 per day. Charity activist Akasin Zikashvili reprimanded those questioning extreme poverty in Georgia. Come along one morning and I'll show you how people starve, die without medical care, die because of homelessness, shortage of drugs. You learn about the news like this only after tragedy strikes and it's visible and you don't give a damn before that, Zikashvili wrote. The state never studied necessities of those without adequate housing what causes homelessness, therefore it is unable to prevent it, which would cost less than housing homeless persons, Kota Eristavi from EMC Rights Group wrote on Facebook. German model for Georgia Georgia is getting closer to the next parliamentary election date, stated for October. However, the ruling party and the opposition groups are yet to agree on how parliament members will be elected. This week, the OSCE published its opinion on the opposition group's proposal, tentatively called Adapted German Model. But now, the ruling party and the opposition groups cannot agree on what Odir thinks about a German model. The Odir opinion is out. There is no indication in the document that the project contradicts the constitution. The ball is in the ruling party's court now. Otar Kahidze from European Georgia Party wrote on his Facebook page. Odir's opinion says that the international good practice recommends that key aspects of electoral legislation not to be open to amendment less than one year before an election. So, they suggested saying goodbye to fundamental changes, one Facebook user wrote on Facebook, voicing Georgian dreams talking points against a German model.